Hey guys, so we've done some horror stories on this channel before, but this is a fucking horror story. Just, this is part one of part two. The next part will be up tomorrow. I don't even know how to sub describe it, just watch it. Yeah, you just, you'll see Like, what comment and subscribe and we'll see you at the end of the video. Yo, listen up. Here's the story about a little guy who usually GMs. That would be me. Scratch record. <laughs> <laughs> I usually run the games for my group and have been since we were all in high school. So now two of my players are not available for a little while and the other one has found another group. The GM insists that the party have no less than four players since anything less is beneath him. Okay. I happen to owe this player honour money since he treats me to food and practically pays for every pizza and these kinds of favours are to be returned. When he wanted me to join I told him to go fuck himself and pass the Cheetos. He insisted and he's more than a little persuasive, so I joined the game. As I understood when I was being filled in and welcomed is that it's a Mass Effect inspired universe with all the best parts of Star Wars using a system I've never touched before. That might just be a homebrew since I've yet to see a rulebook. So my friend takes me over to the game store where they occasionally play and fish for players. One of the group's players who helps the character creation meets me, all smiles and excitement like a salesman. Later turned out that he is one, so he gave me some handouts. Neat little booklets with setting info, basic rules and character guidelines, including a bio of all the playable races. He goes on to talk about their escapades in the party. I'm replacing a face type character, who had connections and diplomacy who seemed like he'd been in for the long haul, but left after their second session and heavily recommends that I should take up the same role. It sounds like there's potential, so I get a blank character sheet and begin creation. I skim through the races despite already resolving to be a human and read about the rather interesting cultures, physiology, psychology, fertility rates, gestation length and maternity quirks. Every single race has attractive humanoid females that have a higher conception chance, longer gestation periods and higher birth rate than regular humans. Right, like, just because I point that out here at this point in the story. <laughs> we know what we're in for. <laughs> I think we know where, where this is going. I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. Naturally, every species crossbreeds effectively with each other. I took a few moments to reread this, then move on. Creepy, but I give it the mistake of a doubt. In the general rules and guidelines section, I find that female PCs get rather hefty experience point bonuses for pregnancy and childbirth. So like the dole over here? Yeah, pretty much it sounds like this is getting really, like, like, what, like, why would you want to be pregnant in an RPG game? Ugh, fuck knows. The mystery was unravelling and I hated being right. I've heard ominous stories about this GM but now I had a solid picture coming to clarity. So I ditch my sheet, get up, find friend and tell him that I'm not doing this shit. He asks why. I tell him. He tells me I've got it all wrong. This is not a DM. It's a fun game moderator that makes them fight alien bug infestations with lightsabers and solve dark mysteries. I ask him whether any of his major female NPCs are pregnant. He says one or two. I ask how many they've met. He says one or two. I give him a hard look over the top of my glasses and he returns it with a shitty eating grin but breaks first. He tells me that it's just a coincidence and it doesn't mean anything. I don't budge from my expression. Then ask him if we have any female characters. He tells me that a girl had just joined at the end of the last session. Not a very experienced player, but very eager to play some such games as opposed to her usual freeform. So my friend, who is a very convincing fucker, gets back to the table just as the GM arrives. A mockery of the human form carved from greasy jelly, blob-like <laughs> if not especially girthy. <laughs> he oozes onto his seat at the head of the table and greets me. He tells me about his game and the current situation and informs me that now they are just waiting for our fifth player to arrive so we can start. He then asks me about my character concept. I tell him that he used to be a hardcore enforcer officer before he was politicked into a dead end for his career by corrupt higher ups and quit to later join the current group after several years spiritual journey across the stars. Nothing special. I told him that I usually play rogues or private investigators, so a more combat-oriented character was new for me. He told me that he is all for male players playing female PCs. I nodded and quietly increased my toxin and <laughs> disease resistance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet me. Why does he want you to like, play like you're pregnant? Stop it. Does he have some weird... Like, this is a weird... I don't want to think about it too much, no, so we just read. <laughs> 
I casually ask him what kinds of threats the party generally faces. He informs me that that shouldn't colour my character creation process, and I tell him that I'm pretty much already done. He reads over my sheet and wonders why the hell I brought so much wrestling in a setting with guns and power blades. I tell him that it was my duty to take criminals alive when I could so. As a peacemaker, I should have plenty of non-lethal options. He tells me that in most of the major cities, male criminals are killed frequently because females, what? especially murderers, are tasked with replacing those they have killed. I inquire no further on account of a very graphic imagination and too much time on 4chan. I only have a handful of points left, when our little circle is complete by the fabled female player. I say hi. She might not be anything like a traditional beauty of the modern age, but this girl is hitting most of my sweet spots. Just a tad chubby for my taste, but otherwise almost perfect. I introduce myself a little lamely. The vicious scourge that is my tongue, bashful in the presence of a cute female. The GM declares rather imperiously that his titan flub is not yet sated and requires the most succulent of game shop concessions. While the only experienced player of this party is off in the washroom, I ask the girl about her adventures in the last session and friend warns me not to sink the ship before it sails. What? What? Okay. This I know, wait, let me just read. Let me just, I, I, don't, I don't want to even think about it. I just want to read and get shocked. <laughs> right, okay. Time passes and the game begins. We are given no recap. The rest of the party begins on their ship, landing in a hangar on the planet. The moment they land, an individual described as a, an incredibly tall and beautiful man wearing exquisite robes leads me and another person on board. He introduces me by my character's name and tells me that I'm joining the team. The other stranger is apparently the last of an incredibly rare and extinct race. A princess, in fact. She has access to all of her race's remaining treasures, but knows of no other survivors of a genocide virus that wiped out the remainder. <laughs> Corona. <laughs> <laughs> I ask what she looked like. He described her as a young, scared, but still regal looking. She stares at us with large, dark eyes on a cute, pale face and pale hair. Mostly human, except for some features that are a little off, often in attractive ways. The most experienced player... From now on, known as Snively. Snively? Snively? Snively. We'll call him Snively, won't we? We'll call him Snively. I think it sounds better. <laughs> Grinned like the most jovial of retards <laughs> and asked what she needed help with, unbuckling himself from the pilot's seat. Oh, he was thank a male. God it said seat. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. He was a male Vivar. My handout confirmed that the males of their species travelled the world to spread their wild oats oh God, by coupling with females of other races, since their seed was incredibly dominant and potent. Oh God! What the fuck is wrong with these absolute sex pests? <laughs> Jesus Christ! I ask how old the girl looks. GM, after just a tiny hesitation, tells me that I am not familiar with how their species mature. I ask him how old she looks on the human scale. He replies with an 11 or 12. Oh! 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 <laughs> I put on my poker face, but give friend a lingering stare right in those honest and forgiving brown eyes of his. The girl asks what she needs our help with. The lolly responds <laughs> with, My race is all but extinct, and the Intergalactic Peace Council has volunteered to help me repopulate with the help of the best of their ranks have to offer. Oh my God. Which is you. What? However, our DNA is not entirely compatible. My civilization has biotechnology that may compensate, but our world is overrun with enemy, living terror weapons. I need brave heroes to fight for my survival, infiltrate a research nexus on my homeworld, and bring back data that will allow your council to recreate our bioengineering techniques. Knock knock, Chris Hansen. I know, like, seriously. <laughs> Chris Hansen walking into the street? Hi, I'm Chris Hansen, <laughs> Dateline NBC. <laughs> GM switches to a nasally fox, highbrow voice and chimes in with, it will, put... <laughs> <laughs> it will put us leagues ahead of our enemies and we get to retain this technology as the end of our bargaining. Snively, <laughs> Snively. Snively asks, isn't my species compatible with everyone? GM answers, yes, but you just create a member of your species after mating. She doesn't need to know that. At this point, the female player states, it would be an honour to help you, your highness. It didn't seem like she had been preparing that line and had not heard the discussion a moment ago. GM turns to her and snaps his fingers, grinning. 
Oh, by the way, give me a health roll. She rolls rather poorly and the GM looks unhappy and actually mildly broody for a while before stating, You'll feel fine. I felt worried. Yeah, I believe that. She looked mildly confused but unabashed. So we took to the stars with barely a break to restock from the last mission. My character got to shop. The GM gave me an equipment list, lovingly detailed with paragraph descriptions for most items. Something caught my eye. Unitox, a poison purging agent that instantly cleans the user's system, blah blah, has a terrible side effect of rendering the user completely sterile and terminating all pregnancies for 1d6 days. I bought a dozen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good, good thinking, mate. Good thinking. The lolly and tall fuck leave. After a surprisingly tense but utterly uneventful starship commute that required many a role and some role playing, the girl and I established some backstory between our characters and she complimented me on my role playing. Apologising that she was not as experienced as me, I told her it was no problem and that she was simply not experienced enough to tell how much I sucked and that any role playing at all was usually exactly enough. We arrive. The planet is green and silver white in colour from the atmosphere and orbital photographs reveal a green mist or growth of some kind covering most of the pure architecture. We locate our target and land near it, avoiding the green patches. I decided to do an atmospheric scan or test or whatever to see if the air was breathable. GM gave me a blank look and had me roll, then told me it was alright, save for a tiny content of some chemical that might have mood-altering effects on us. What type of mood-altering effects? I don't know. I made sure everyone was equipped with rebreathers and more regular detox chems, claiming my character was used to poisonous atmospheres. Girl prepares her equipment and walks out first, saying that she will scout ahead. GM describes the scenery in the building where we are to find our treasure. He says a door is open, cutting off an in-character statement from me. She turns on a flashlight and makes a stealth roll to enter. From here on, she will be referred to as victim. (laughs) So I state that my character is catching up, as does Snivelly and Friend. We enter the building just behind victim. Just before he has her roll perception, she succeeds and notices movement in the darkness far ahead. The building was very futuristic, though overgrown with plant life and vines. All of the automatic doors were open and jammed that way, there being no power. We proceed carefully, though the girl was determined to stay ahead, so I watched her back. Soon we enter a massive chamber, going up and down multiple stories, at least 200 feet in diameter us being on a platform or catwalk of sorts. We see a single computer interface on the platform, still online and shimmering. In character, I state that I have no experience with computers and ask who does. Victim does. She moves ahead and starts up the system. GM has her role computer skills and language to see if she can decipher their alphabet and she gets two critical successes in a row. Downloads the data we need. Everyone except Snively are suitably impressed and she seems happy with herself. With a grin, GM describes that the action activates something. A computerized voice states something important in a language we don't understand. There is an explosion, and the whole platform that was suspended over the bottomless pit in this tubular tunnel collapses with her on it. My character, being a fast thinker and a rather resourceful man, with balls of carbon (laughs) nanotube reinforced titanium, dives right after her. Plummeting into an unknown abyss is daily fare for Dark Fal- Dirk Falcon. Is that his name? Dark Falcon? I don't know. He never told us his name before. <laughs> Dark Falcon. Former space SWAT elite made adventurer extraordinaire. <laughs> you should have told us his name already. I know. That's a great name. Dark Falcon. <laughs> I catch the girl mid plummet and swing us to safety via grappling hook gun. Excellent rolls all round. Safety turns out to be a similar platform with a dead data terminal a few dozen floors below. I ask if she's hurt, and after asking the GM, she replies with a, just startled, thank you. I began to ask questions to form my escape plan, as the GM rolls some dice and tells us we hear something from the door beyond the walkway that leads to this shitty, unstable platform. It seems to be buzzing. We see a winged insect the size of a pony. It promptly rushes us. Victim spends her turn lighting up her power sword. Well, I can only let go of the grappling gun and let it swing beside my head. The insect promptly tackles my character, 
but a decent wrestling roll lets me flip it over the edge, but not before another roll and the result of its hitherto unmentioned stinger tail burying itself into my shoe between my big toe and the others, presumably though the armour plating on my boots. It gets dragged off the edge, rolled hold on. The girl grabs my grappling gun and retracts it. I try to kick the creature off. It starts to fly, lifting me up as it goes. I grab its head and begin to wring its neck and succeed, instantly killing it. No space bug is a match for Dirk Falcon, but now I am falling. The girl rolls to catch on to me with the grappling gun and succeeds, my armour being the only thing that stopped it from crushing my ribcage. But a fumble on the follow-up strength check to hold on to the gun pulls her off and soon we plunge into what is described as a horrifically foul-smelling yet strangely alluring shoulder-deep slime. Strangely alluring? Mm. So we get up. I tell the GM that I have a full face mask rebreather so that I can look underneath the surface of the fluid with my mask-mounted lights. He says that it's incredibly murky, but I can see wrist-thick vines composing the floor. He rolls and smirks at victim, stating that she can feel something cold and moving rub up against her leg and over her thigh. He says that she had just a basic face mask strapped over her nose and mouth, and it had been knocked off during her plunge. So she swallowed a few mouthfuls of the fluid and now needs to make a few rolls. She makes her first one. GM says she's free to act for now. So victim plunges her power sword into the liquid and that generally gets the job done. Whatever was in the water is no longer groping her. The sword, however, boils the fluid around it and soon it's too hot to stand. So she keeps it above her head for light. That seems to have gotten the attention of some things as the water around us begins to move unnaturally. There are ripples and trails appearing all over the place, all around us. We keep close. I produce my blaster. Moments before we are about to engage in my master plan of, I have 10 plasma grenades in my inventory. GM rolls and states that victim is suddenly and violently pulled under. So he informs the girl that she feels herself being pulled fast and hard under the water, something having tied her ankles together. I see the glow of her power sword move towards one direction, then stop victim having dropped it. I follow quickly toward it, but I'm attacked by more vines which tie me in place thanks to my fumble dressing roll. In the meanwhile, victim fumbles a resistance roll and feels herself getting drowsy and mildly sick very rapidly. I have to commend this girl. She was role playing everything to the hilt with much gusto, even as GM described her armour and suit torn off. Even as he described her suspended from the ceiling by a tendril that had buried her wrist in goo. The first time she hesitated was when her legs were forced open, when the words, it approached with the intent of violation. She looked more uncertain, but decided to pin it together with her legs with a wonderful roll. I think the dice gods were objecting to what was happening here, so I fart around with tentacles for about half a dozen rounds, before I finally roll well enough to access my wrist computer, which holds a remote reaction command for my grappling gun. Girl had clipped it to her belt earlier, so there's no way it was dropped, and the grappling gun can lift upwards of 250 pounds. I had paid for an extra strong space winch, so I am pulled directly to her. Hundreds of tentacles lash out to grab me, some succeeding, but not before I dropped a plasma grenade, broiling the vast majority. Victim received a phone call and told us she was being called away for about an hour. She seemed reluctant to leave. I take it the girl isn't aware of what tentacle rape is. The GM had her make one last roll and she passed out from the liquid in her system. She says her goodbyes and BRBs and is off. In the meanwhile, Snivelly and friend had managed to come across a room covered in what looks like humanoids plastered to the walls with strange, flexible, slippery gunk. <laughs> they cut it open to reveal a woman, same race as the princess, still lolly aged if just a bit older. Snivelly starts to get an awkward tone to his voice. I remember him grinning, fish lips agape. Oh, jeez. Oh. Get Chris Hansen in here now. Knock, knock! <laughs> <laughs> to the moment the girl leaves, GM turns to me and describes how the tentacle plunges into her cunt. Oh, my God. And begins pumping fluid into it. He describes it in great detail. I could swear the fucker was drilling. When he finishes... Oh. He finishes it with... This is what they do. As if in response to my look of horror, it's a genocide weapon you realise. 
It makes them unable to propagate their own species. Oh, and around this area. He gestures to the diddled up map of the chamber. The whole floor raises up and what looks like a fish head with more tendrils coming off of it, like hair coming up and opens a massive gaping jaw with a smaller mouth inside and it roars at you. I rolled to toss one of my plasma grenades into its mouth and rush the bastard on the subsequent turn. Ready to rape something while I think of how to gracefully fuck up this sleazy asshole's life. Dirk Falcon climbed the horrible tentacle nucleus with his knife and hatred. Despite mediocre attack rolls, the damage was flowing just fine and soon I had burrowed a hole deep enough into its planty skull to insert a grenade directly. All the tentacles in the room went limp as the char-boiled carcass floated sizzling on the goop. I go to rescue the dame, and the GM insists on describing how the tentacle had sealed off her vaginal entrance oh. with a rubbery residue of some kind. Oh my god. I nod quickly and interrupt him, telling him I just cut her down. He mentioned something about a bloated stomach, and a glazed over expression and drill. I give friend another 20 second look. Yeah, you fucking will. Oh. Like, what the fuck did you invite me to, mate? Like, seriously, what the fuck is wrong with you people? Damn. Jesus fuck. So I grab the girl, her equipment, her sword, my blaster, my grappling hook, and bail out of there. Dirk is a manly man and can carry all his shit with ease. I make it up to the initial entrance and get in communication range of the rest of the party. They tell me they've found survivors. Meanwhile, Snivelly has passed a note to the GM and they are giggling to each other. Fucking Lady McLeague faces over here. <laughs> they had moved on after securing the girl and he had to backtrack. Friend was utterly oblivious to what he was doing, so I shoot the girl up with Unitox. GM looks at me and asks if I read the warning. I say it's perfect, since the creatures are apparently rape monsters that incubate their young and chicks, and she is clearly drugged. Might be dying. He suggests that I should wait until she's back out of the character to get her consent. Oh, what? right. Now to get her consent? <laughs> All right, okay. All right well, All you right. just f- fucking shove something up her cunt, apparently. <laughs> I say my character thinks it's best to do this now because she might be dying. He gives me a shrug and acts like I fuck up, despite knowing better. Meanwhile, Friend, whose character is a well-trained medic and doctor, specialising in weird biology, as well as an explorer, diags her. So we blaze through a few dozen of those insect monsters on our way back to the ship. The information in the girl secure, we lift off into space and Friend returns to diagnose the girl. He manages to siphon the tentacles smegma. Oh, and the- smegma. <laughs> smegma. Oh, absolute knob she's everywhere. <laughs> and the eggs out of her, but notices that she's affected by a dangerous and highly controlled substance that I bought at the general store. <laughs> he doesn't make a deal of it at all, and we arrive at home base. We are debriefed and she is taken to the medical facilities there. Soon her player returns and the victim is functioning once more. We brief her on what had occurred, glazing over the rape details. Tallfuck, whose name I forgot, returns with the lolly princess who thanks us profusely, but Tallfuck singles me and victim out, wanting to have a private chat. It appears that terminating a potential pregnancy, no matter from what and no matter how early or unwanted or unlikely, is considered punishable by death by the galactic Accords. Okay. That's fucking. But to be honest with you, whoever came up with this one is an absolute <laughs> sex offender. This fucker came up with it. The slug monster came up with fucking. <laughs> mate, imagine showing up for game night, right? And you roll up, and then this fucking like, slug monster just lurches and. Crawls. It's muck from Pokemon, but with a fedora. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ! What the fuck is on? But, like, let's just get this. Let's keep going. With this. Let's keep going. So victim comes back in person. She is ready to play some more and she brought snacks. <laughs> the GM allows his GM PC to relay to her the story. As upholders of space and law, which we are apparently are, <laughs> okay, they must punish me. They had also found a fertilised embryo which must be re-implanted into her right away or break space law. See, this is why you just get off and leave. Just leave. Just fucking leave. Mum, please come pick me up. <laughs> please. So I point out that these things are not native to their world and are in fact a bioengineered terror weapon. He states that that doesn't matter under space law. 
She says she doesn't want to be pregnant with a hideous creature, let alone pregnant from rape. She was saving herself for marriage. After her sister was taken against her will by a rapist and begins to roleplay her character becoming emotional, Dirk Falcon quick draws his blaster and shoots the syringe with the rescued embryo that the GMPC is holding and rolls his best roll of the day, rendering the potential tentacle rape baby into space vapour. Good. <laughs> Fucking good. So Tall Fag pulls out a device of some kind and points it at me. I am teleported butt naked in a spherical chamber of sorts. It's padded and obviously a holding cell. Victim is not happy with this. She quick draws her sword like I did and attacks. What's your margin of success? My what? Your roll subtracted from your character skill with swords. Oh, 14. Huh? So that was where all of her character points went. GM begins to argue that she has no reason to do this. She claims that I was the only friend she had in this game so far. That she's emotionally unstable after what had happened. And that this guy just tried to implant her with a monster. Damage is rolled. Silences are had. She manages to neatly remove his arms past the elbows and tear open his ribcage. The GM obviously fudging injuries that could be cured with super science as opposed to the usual instant death this would cause. I'm pretty certain that this was the guy who signs our paychecks. Still. Just before you take off his other arm, he pushes a button and you find yourself teleported completely naked as well, into the same holding cell. GM looks at me and says, I know you're new to the game, but you shouldn't have done such stupid things. You shouldn't be such a fucking dirty pedo bastard. These NPCs are here for a reason. He managed to enunciate that in the exact way I hate the most. I did what my character would do in that situation, I stated firmly. I don't regret any of it. Guess you'll have to learn. So I move beside the cell door and wait while talking to the girl, trying not to stare at her naked form. She tells me what she did. I tell her that she was stupid and she should have ran or abided the law or anything. She tells me she knows that this way we get to have our own adventure. I tell her yes, an adventure it will be. The cell door opens and I flex my massive wrestling skill by wrangling the first guard through. These guys seem to be dressed like futuristic hospital orderlies, more than prison guards. So I use him as a human shield against a few stun blasts that go flying through the door. Toss his shock baton to victim and proceed to use my hostage as a meaty battering ram, but not before I'm accosted by over a dozen stun blasts from all sides. Since I resist them like a chump though, a couple of fumbles later and I'm out cold. Apparently they surrounded the cell by two dozen guards on a moment's notice and they simply gassed the cell after to knock her out. I was pretty pissed. My character comes to long enough to see her being dragged away down the hallway by men in hospital masks. They give her some treatment to counter the effects of unitoxin and I'm taken to space court for space trial. Lucky for me, friend happens to be a space lawyer too and he's there to condone my actions. Apparently tentacle monster eggs don't count under the anti-abortion laws. Still, this is where the GM chose to end the game. There's some after-game stuff. I'm suspicious as fuck and take a snapshot of my character sheet when the GM's not looking and tells us he likes to keep the sheets. He'll probably plan for my advantages if not try to change my stuff, the greasy bastard. I have an I told you so discussion with my friend. I think he really wishes it didn't go like this, but still claims that the GM is just into really detailed and adult sci-fi settings. Uh, that's one more to put on. I know. And that nothing of the sort happened before, and that he was just adult about it. I nearly cried. Rage tears. I spoke with a girl. She found the last part a bit awkward, but interesting to RP. I told her that games are usually not like this. She said that she liked what I did in game and really seemed like a hero, like she wants her character to be. I gathered up my stuff and we walked. I opened the door, got on the floor as everybody seemed to try and step on my spilled miniatures and dice, but I got them all up alright. Friend, victim and I got together for coffee after I made arrangements to perhaps play one of my games. I was incredibly disappointed that both of them seemed determined to give this game another go. When asked... No, they didn't really have much fun. There was potential for fun, but no actual fun. And if everything goes like this session, they will play again. So you see now, TJ. This is why I must destroy this game. That was the moment I realised it. I must kill it for the girl, 
to save her innocence and belief in good role playing. I must kill it for friend, to snap him out of this bizarre shaman curse. Fucking is a curse. <laughs> he doesn't even have tentacles or impregnation fetishes, as this stuff really squicks him. Lesbians are more his speed. I must do it for fish lips and gelatinous GM, for they have transgressed. And I must do it for myself, to purge this taint, to sleep well again. Well, normally at the end of these videos, I try to say, like, you know what, well, I hope you guys enjoyed, but I don't know if I I'm can... I'm scared to read the next part. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I can ask you, I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you guys cringed with us. Yeah. I hope you did that. There's a lot of sighing for me. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh I didn't my even God. know what to say. I know, I know. A lot of the time it's like, I have no words for no. this. I've loved absolute degeneracy. It's just, what what is wrong with people? But, I like I like the name Gelatinous. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 think I'm, I, I hope that's in the title. I hope that's in the title. Um, but look, remember, this is part one or part two. Next part will be out tomorrow. So remember, like, comment, subscribe. Remember, hit that bell notification so you can stay up to speed. All that other good shit. And we'll see you at the end of the next video. Bye.